Okay, I haven't done a video in a while. Figure I'd better get one out there, eh? Um, I'm just going to let God's Word speak. Revelation 1, 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So the whole reason why the readers are blessed that read this book, that hear the words of the prophecy, and keep those things which are written, is, is the whole reason that they are to do that is for the time is at hand. Okay, what does that hand mean? Well, let's just go to, I looked up the Greek word here, it's egos, or angos, and let's just read other passages. I have found that there is not one other understanding of the word at hand, of the angos, then nearness, something happening, in this case, the time, a time is near, is at hand. But let's just let God's word speak on this. So I'm going to look this up right now. Boom. I'm going to go to Matthew. The first time you find it is in Matthew 24, 32, where Jesus says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. Same word, is at hand. Okay, let that sink in for a little while. What does that mean? The very next verse, Matthew 24, 33, may help out. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. That word near is at hand. Matthew 26, 18, let's just sink it in a little bit further. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. If you go back to the Matthew 20, 26, he's, this, his, the Passover meal with the disciples is just about to occur. We'll go to Mark. Mark 12, 13, 28. I'm not going to read it. It's just a repeat of Matthew 24, 32. Mark 13, 29 is just a repeat of Matthew 24, 33. Now we'll go over to Luke 19, 11. And I'm just going in a row of all the verses that have that word, you know, in, in that form. And as they heard, Luke 19, 11, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now the nigh, that's, that's the at hand. He was at, he was at hand. He was near Jerusalem. Again, nearness. We'll just let that sink in. Luke 21, 30 is just a repeat of Matthew 24, 33. Luke 21, 31 is a repeat of Matthew 24, the, you know, the next verse. Okay, so we've gone through the first three Gospels. They've used that exact word with that exact spelling. And not once, I mean, every single time, it's about nearness, at hand, close by. Now we're going to John. John is the very one that every, most believe wrote the book of Revelation. Let's see how he uses that word. Now I'm going to quote every instance in which he uses that word spelled exactly that same way in the Greek. Okay, Matthew, John 2, 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The whole reason why Jesus went up to Jerusalem was because to, to the Passover, because the Passover was at hand. It's about to happen, so he went up. This was the Passover, you know, 2,000 years later, you know. And it, uh, I'm not going to put my comments, I'm sorry. Well, let's just let that word sink in. John 3, 23. And John also was baptized in Ainun, near to Salem. Because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. Same word, near. The city was near to Salem. They didn't have to walk that far, it was near. John 6, 4, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh, was at hand. John 6, 19, so when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, they, and they were afraid. So Jesus was coming near again. 
John 6, 23. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. So they're boats that were near the place where they ate bread. Again, we, we don't have any other understanding of this word except nearness, or at handness, or nighness, closeness. John 7, 2. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. John eleven eighteen. 18, now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Hmm. We actually have a kind of a definition of nearness as far as locality. 15 furlongs off. Nonetheless, near. John eleven fifteen eleven fifty four. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. John 11, 55, And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Again, coming full circle to the Passover, being near. People doing something because it's near. God, God, People are blessed for reading the book of the prophecy of Revelation, for it's near. Very similar to the Passover being near, the city being near, the you know, locality and all that. Whether it's time, city, whatever. John nineteen twenty. This title then read, Many of the Jews... For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Again, nearness. John 19.42 There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulcher was nigh at hand. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm not going to read every single, that, that's all the Gospels and that's John. So far we have no reason to think this word at hand means something far off far away, whether it be a time, city, location, a person being there, an event being there. I'm just going to, Acts 1, 12 is another one. Um, Acts 9, 38, you can read. You, and you could go on and read whatever, just keep on reading all the way through and you will not find another definition of this word egos. But I'm going to go to the, the last one. We already read Revelation 1-3, but let's go to Revelation 22, 10. And he saith unto me, so at the opening of the book of Revelation, they're blessed who read the book, for the time is at hand, which we've read is clearly nearness. It's not something far off. And the Revelation 22 says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Again, the prophecy of this book, don't seal it. For why? For the time is at hand. So we have two witnesses here in the word of God telling us that the time is at hand for the things of the prophecy of this book. In the beginning and at the end of the book. Now, was this book written, was this book written to Christians in our day and age? Well, I think the most people who are um, understanding of when the Bible was written, they understand it was written back near the times of Jesus. And the uh, Revelation 1 4 says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. So he wrote this to churches which are in Asia, which I do not believe exist today. I believe most would agree with that. That it does that, that these seven churches, sure there may be churches in those areas, but they're not the same seven churches that were back then. So John is writing to people in the first century that, that were part of churches. Um, John goes into detail of different strengths and weaknesses that these churches had. In fact, he goes here and tells of some persecution some of them went endure. actually names one of the, person, one of the martyrs. Um, and then finishes here with, with the... Um, we find it Revelation 22.6. It was, can't find it there. I'm not going to worry about that. Not, but my point to this video was just to let that word sink in to the minds of those who are listening to this. That that word you can't just easily bypass. 
and push out the events in the book of Revelation to 2,000 years removed off from the first century readers. To do so would be to contradict the scriptures and to contradict the word God had chosen um, to describe when these events would happen. And these events, the time of the, 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 of the events that were happening in the book of this prophecy were near at hand. And the book was not written to people 2,000 years later and wasn't written to every single generation thereafter. The book is force, yes, but they were written to, according to the word of God, the seven churches in Asia. John wrote them before he died, which means um, not too many years after Jesus went to heaven. So these things, the time was at hand, these events were first century occurrences, and therefore we need to adjust our um, understanding of end time, of the book of Revelation, to what the book of Revelation reveals. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, and the opening and closing of this revelation of Jesus Christ reveals to us a first century occurrence of the time of the happenings of the book of the prof of, of, the, of the prophecies of this book all right hopefully that was a biblical argument I hope it's irrefutable I hope um, that we would be willing to com to conform our ideas of eschatology that whoever we may have heard preaching or whoever whatever books we have read that are unscript that are not inspired we would take those uninspired writings and messages and compare them with what the Holy Spirit has revealed in the Word of God. And if they do not match, then we can't, you know, we got to conform our thoughts and ideas and biases and, and, and um, understandings to God's Word and let God's Word be our guide. All right, well, hopefully I made a, a, a decent biblical irrefutable um, argument there and may the rest be up to the spirit of God and may we just follow him. All right. God bless you guys. You guys are awesome. Take care.